Hi folks, welcome back. Thank you for watching. Please do hit subscribe if you haven't done so yet. It really, really does help when you do that. So today, guys, it's the big one. It's Lead Guitar Day. This is the video you've all been waiting for. Well, maybe you haven't, but I've been looking forward to making it. It's going to be fun. So what I'm going to do today is much like the rhythm guitar video last week. I'm going to take a few of the key, most important lead guitar sounds from this song and run them in solo so you can hear exactly how they sound recorded and talk a little bit about which guitars I use, which pedals I use, how I set them and all of that. But first and foremost, the biggest difference to how I record lead guitar sounds over rhythm guitar sounds is I tend to use a room mic on top of the close mic on the amps. Now I don't usually do this for rhythm guitar parts because I like quite a tight punchy direct sound but for lead guitar parts I like having a roomy sound and plus it has quite a lot of realism it makes the recording sound more like the guitar amps do in the room which is exactly what I've been trying to do with this video series. So the mic I use is a lovely Sherps CMC6 mic, a wonderful small diaphragm condenser. I use it for all my voiceovers, it's what you're listening to right now. And it sits above my amps over there but pointing out into the room. And it works really nicely like that because it adds a lot of the room sound to the guitar signal but without too much of the direct sound. The close mics do a great job of that. But I can just blend the room mic in underneath to a point where it feels really nice. So I've been doing that on all the lead guitar parts and it's been really really fun. So the main guitar part I want to break down for you today is the main lead of the song. The one I've done using the Mark 1 Tone Bender which I've been ranting on about a lot in this video series. Now I did this sound using this guitar here, my lovely Hagstrom Viking semi-acoustic, Monty's PAF replica pickups, my favourite pickups I've ever played and I used the bridge pickup into the Mark 1 and then also the Guru's Sinusoid tube driven spring reverb tank in a box pedal which is absolutely incredible. So the main lead guitar part, and I'm just gonna let this run, it's about a minute long, sounds like this. Now I'm really, really happy with how that turned out. This pedal sounds absolutely stunning, as I hope you will agree. It's probably my favourite fuzz I've ever played. That guitar, the Hagstrom, sounds incredible too. And what I really, really liked, and this is why I chose the Hagstrom to record that guitar part, is it's always just on the edge of feeding back. It's really alive, it's really interactive, and it felt so nice to play. So. Moving on to this pedal's brother, we're going to look at the Mark II tone bender guitar part. Now, this does some harmonies underneath the guitar part you just listened to, but it does take the lead in the next section of the song for a real kind of attitude filled Jimmy Page type riff played on my Les Paul Custom, again with some Monty's PAF replicas. Now, that starts out as being the main lead instrument and then what I'll do when I mix it is start to fade it back at the end of what you're going to hear today and it'll sit in the background holding out some sustained notes but the main riff that it plays is this <laughs> So glad I got those pinch harmonics, I was really happy with those. So moving on to the clean picking part, there is a lead guitar over that as well and that was done on this guitar here, my lovely Strat, in the second position so it's quite thin and quacky. But instead of using a compressor on the front end, which I would usually do, I did use a rack compressor on the way in afterwards. But on the front end, I actually used a fuzz pedal, and that was the Effectrode Mercury Tube Fuzz, which works really nicely at very low gain for just adding a little bit of subtle grit. 
The main ingredient to this guitar part though was the Big Tone Music Brewery Maggie pedal, which is a vibrato pedal based on an old Magnatone amp. And I've struggled with vibrato over the years as an effect, but oh man, this pedal sounds so good. So it's the strap going into the Mercury, into the vibrato, and I think there is a touch of the Analog Man ARDX20 delay and the Guru Sinusoid as well. So the clean guitar part sounds thusly. Oh, that vibrato sounds so nice. I love that pedal. <laughs> so, moving on to a, a more riffy thing now. I used two guitars, and there's a riff that kind of plays a few times throughout the song and right at the end. I used two guitars for this using slightly different sounds, but kind of similar, and panned them hard left and hard right. The first is using this pedal here. I did it on my white telly, and this is a Mark III tone bender, and that sounds like this. And on the other side, the same thing played on my Dan Electro, but using the Analog Man Peppermint Fuzz, which is a kind of souped up fuzz face, quite bright and buzzy. And that sounds like this. And the two of them together, panned really wide and sounding glorious, is this. The final guitar part I want to break down for you today, guys, is probably one of the more stupid sounding guitar parts I've ever recorded, but it worked really nicely in this track and gives a real twisted sound to the ending. And that was done again on my lovely Dan Electro using both pickups, going through the Effectrode Fire Bottle Tube Booster and into the Jam Pedals Waterfall, running again in vibrato mode. I'm getting really into vibrato on this song. And it kind of has this really twisted backwards type lick, but it sits really nicely in the final song, I promise. So it, on its own, sounds like so. Pretty screwed up, but I really like it. It does sit nicely in the final song. You'll have to wait to hear the final mix for that. But trust me, it's in there and it does sound kind of quirky. So that's pretty much it for the guitar parts I wanted to break down today, guys. I hope you like them. Please do comment underneath and let me know what you thought. And please do carry on writing in with your questions for hashtag AskPerky. You can comment underneath any of these videos or email me at the address on screen now. And if I can make a video answering your questions, I will absolutely do so. And please do carry on subscribing to this channel. I know I say it in every video, but it really does make a big difference. So thank you guys. In the next video, we're going to be going to Oxford to record bass with my good friend Josh Clark. So make sure you check back for that. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.